In this video, we are going to talk about how to predict the products of a single replacement reaction. And before we get into actually predicting the products, we need to first again talk about how to recognize a single replacement reaction from just the reactants and what to expect when you are predicting the products. So for a single replacement reaction, you are going to see a common pattern of an element reacting with a compound. So for instance, we could have calcium all by itself, that's our element, reacting with magnesium sulfide, that's our compound. When you see an element by itself reacting with a compound, you are going to get out an element by itself and a second new compound. So there's two different um, kind of categories of single replacement reactions. In this one, you see that we have two metals. We have calcium and we have magnesium. When you have two metals, those are going to want to switch places with each other. So the calcium wants to switch places with that magnesium so that it can bond with that sulfur to make the new compound, leaving magnesium as the lone element. The other category is to have two halogens that are trying to replace each other. So for instance, we could have a compound like aluminum chloride reacting with bromine. Now notice how I don't always have to put the element first and then the compound, so here I'm switching it up. It's still an element in a compound, now it's just the compound is first in the order of reactants. Still a single replacement. You also notice that bromine has a two after it. This is because bromine is a diatomic element. When it's by itself, it is more stable as Br2 than just Br, and you have to remember that. But it's still a lone element. We don't consider this to be a compound because it's just one element by itself. Now, in this case, we have two halogens. Halogens are going to be chlorine, bromine, fluorine, and iodine. So when you see those two, these are going to replace each other because we don't have two metals in this, in the reactants to replace each other. So the halogens are replacing each other to get a new element and a new compound out. However, there is one more step to this madness and that comes from the activity series. So you should have this on a reference sheet. If not, if you wanna try and find this on the internet, I like this one specifically. Now there's two sides to the activity series. We have the metals and we have the halogen side. When you have in the reactants for a single replacement reaction, two metals. Okay, and again, we talked about how the calcium is trying to replace the magnesium. You look on the side with the metals and the lone element that is trying to replace the metal in the compound needs to be higher. So in this case, in order for calcium to steal the sulfur away, in order for it to replace the magnesium, calcium has to be higher than the magnesium on the activity series. So let's find where this is where magnesium is. This is where calcium is. Again, calcium has to be higher than magnesium in order to replace it. Calcium is higher than magnesium so it will replace it in the compound, kicking the magnesium off to be alone as that lone element. Now, if you notice that there are two halogens present, in this case, we have chlorine and bromine, you look on the side of the activity series with the halogens, and again, the lone halogen has to be higher up on the activity series in order to replace the halogen in the compound. If it's not, there will be no reaction. So bromine has to be higher than chlorine, which it isn't, 
And when it is not higher, that means that the bromine will not replace the chlorine. This is going to stay as is. And we just simply write that there is no reaction. So let's start with some practice problems. We have four here today. Now the first thing we're going to do is we want to go through and notice that pattern on how to recognize that this is a single replacement reaction based on just the reactants. Again, a single replacement reaction is going to be an element reacting with a compound. So let's just go through each of these four and make sure that we recognize the element and the compound. So aluminum is our element, sodium oxide is our compound, calcium is our element, iron chloride is our compound, potassium fluoride is our compound, chlorine gas is our element, silver iodide is our compound, bromine is our element. So this is the pattern, element in a compound, element in a compound, element in a compound, element in a compound. Now let's start predicting the products. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is whether there are two metals or two halogens in the reactants. In this case, aluminum and sodium are both metals, so we have two metals. And again, we are going to refer to our activity series on the metal side. We want aluminum to be higher than the sodium in order for the reaction to take place. So let's find aluminum is here. Sodium is here. Aluminum has to be higher than sodium. It is not in this case, so that means that this is no reaction. Aluminum is not reactive enough to replace the sodium, so no reaction occurs. Let's try this next one. So calcium is a metal. Iron is also a metal, so we have two metals. Calcium has to be higher on the activity series than iron in order for it to replace it. So calcium is up here, iron is down here. Calcium has to be higher than iron, in this case it is, so this is actually going to take place. The calcium is going to come in, replace the iron, and the iron is going to get kicked off. So since the iron is getting kicked off, the iron is going to now be a lone element. And then since the calcium is replacing the iron with the chlorine, we have a new compound containing calcium and chlorine. But whenever you make a new compound, you need to remember you need to crisscross, especially when it's ionic, remember? So calcium, we know is a plus two, it's in group two. Chlorine is a minus one. We need to crisscross. The two above the calcium goes by the chlorine. The one by the chlorine goes by the calcium. So the two products we have are iron by itself and a new compound called calcium chloride. And those are the products. Let's try this one down here. We notice now that we have two halogens instead of two metals. So now we refer to this side of the activity series. So in order for chlorine, to replace fluorine in this compound, chlorine has to be higher than fluorine. Chlorine has to be higher than fluorine, which it is, so this is actually going to happen. The chlorine is going to boot the fluorine off, so now fluorine is by itself, and now the chlorine is replacing the fluorine with the potassium, so we have a new compound made of potassium and chlorine but there are a few things that we need to do. First, we made a new compound, which means we need to crisscross. So potassium we know is in group one with a plus one charge. Chlorine in group 17 is a minus one. Those are equal and opposite, so they cancel out, leaving us with just KCl. And then fluorine, you should know, is one of the diatomic elements. Just by itself, it's not stable. To be more stable, it's going to appear as F2. Obviously, then we would have to go through and do some balancing, but we're just working on predicting products. So those are our, that's our reaction. The last one here, we notice that we also have two halogens. 
So we need the bromine to be higher than the iodine in order to replace it. So we need bromine to be higher than iodine. It is. So it is going to kick the iodine out. So now iodine is by itself and the bromine is replacing it with the silver. So we have silver and we have bromine as our new compound. Now we made a new compound, so we need to crisscross. Silver is always a plus one. Bromine's always a minus one. Equal and opposite, they cancel out. And one other thing, iodine is also a diatomic element, so it is going to appear as I2. Now if you don't put the two on the iodine or the fluorine, those are going to be marked incorrect. So you need to make sure you know your diatomic elements. And that's how you predict products for single replacement reactions. So let's try some practice problems. Why don't you pause the video, try these on your own, and then hit play when you're ready. Now this first one is a little bit tricky. You see the hydrogen, and you don't know if hydrogen should be acting like a metal or a non-metal. You know it as a non-metal. However, we are going to act, um, hydrogen is going to act as a metal in our case for single replacement reactions. So in this first one, we do have two metals. So we're going to refer to this side of the activity series. Magnesium has to be higher on the activity series than hydrogen in order for it to replace it. So magnesium has to be higher than hydrogen, which it is. So magnesium is going to replace the hydrogen, kicking the hydrogen off. And now the magnesium is bonding to the bromine. And now there are a few things we need to do. We made a new compound, so we need to crisscross. Magnesium we know is a plus two charge. Bromine is a minus one. We need to crisscross those charges so the two above the magnesium comes down by the bromine. The one would come down by the magnesium, but we don't write that. And then you should have recognized that hydrogen is one of those diatomic elements, so you need to put a two there. Obviously then we would have to balance this, but we're just working on predicting products. So the second one, you should have noticed that there's also two metals, copper and zinc. So zinc has to be above copper in order to replace it. So zinc has to be above copper in this case, it is. So zinc is going to kick the copper to the curb. So now the copper is by itself. And now the zinc is going to form a compound with the chlorine. Now let's crisscross because we made a new compound. Zinc is a plus two. Chlorine is a minus one. When we crisscross, the two above the zinc should have come down as a subscript on the chlorine giving us that formula. And then the copper is not a diatomic element, so it's just going to hang out as Cu. And we're done. Now this last one here, you should have noticed that you had two halogens, so you're looking at the halogen side of the activity series. In order for iodine to replace chlorine, iodine has to be higher than chlorine, which it's not. So therefore, Iodine is not going to replace chlorine in this compound, so we have nothing happening. We have no reaction. And that is how you predict products for single replacement reactions.